20 million years ago. And today, by comparison, the polar cap is extremely small in the Arctic region and uh, all those places like uh, Canada and Scotland are uh, perfectly free of permanent ice. Now, how did that happen on the Earth? There are many views, and uh, some involve the fact that the Earth has an orbit, orbit around the Sun, and sometimes the Earth is closer to the Sun, sometimes further. Sometimes the polar cap of the Earth is tilted more towards the Sun, and sometimes further away from the Sun. That's one possibility. Another possibility is that volcanoes on the Earth have made uh, ash and fine particles in the atmosphere which prevents sunlight from striking the surface and cools the earth and there's a large number of other possibilities in fact there is a club of people who worry about uh, how to make ice ages on the earth and to belong to this club you have to invent a new reason and there are at last count some 80 members so you can see that there are lots of reasons proposed and it's unlikely that they're all correct although more than one could be correct now in the case of mars there are similar possibilities. And uh, let's just spend a moment on what those possibilities are. Here is a globe of Mars. Um, one, but why don't we turn the sun on, always good to do when we talk about climate on a planet, and where we could dim the overhead lights a little bit. Good. Now, one possibility is that um, the sun itself gets brighter and dimmer over long periods of time. Let's see if we can dim the sun. Oh, good. There goes the sun. Dimming. You must imagine great ice ages happening on Mars, the atmosphere condensing out at the polar cap. And now if the sun were to brighten up some, brighten the sun, thank you, uh, then we imagine the polar cap vaporizing, more atmosphere pouring into the air, uh, enough pressure for water to run on the ground, rivers forming and so on. Well, that's one possibility because the sun might be a variable star. Another possibility is that there are times when the polar cap of Mars is pointed towards the sun and at that time polar cap vaporizes, more atmosphere, running water, and times when the polar cap is averted from the sun and things get very cold up there and all the atmosphere rushes away to freeze out in the polar regions. There are many other reasons proposed for climate change on Mars as well. And I've mentioned just a couple of them to give you some feeling for the kinds of events we're talking about. But these are grand events. They're on a planetary or solar system scale. It would be very nice to understand what they're about and to see whether causes of climate change on Earth and on Mars are similar or different. It might be that we could learn something about changes in the Earth's climate by examining changes in the Martian climate. Since we are poking about the Earth's atmosphere, making changes in the Earth's atmosphere and surface, it is possible that we might inadvertently, accidentally, make major changes in the Earth's climate. It is important to study other planets as cautionary tales of what not to do with the Earth. Now, there is another consequence of these climate changes. If there was once a time when Mars was warmer with higher atmospheric pressure and uh, more liquid water, doesn't that mean that there was once a time when Mars was more conducive to life of a terrestrial familiar sort than it is now? The Martian atmosphere we knew by the time of the Mariner 9 mission was composed mostly of carbon dioxide. The total pressure was only about 1% or a little less than it is here. It's about the same as the density of the Earth's atmosphere at an altitude of 100,000 feet. The air is quite thin on Mars. In addition, there are small quantities of water vapor, of, we now know, nitrogen, of oxygen, although much tinier quantities of oxygen. The amount of oxygen in the Martian atmosphere is much too little for us to breathe. And even the smaller quantities I'm dropping molecules, even smaller quantities of ozone, a form of oxygen which has three oxygen atoms. Now, this is actually not the best model of ozone. It does show three oxygen atoms. Now, 
Could life exist in such an environment? What about the temperature? Well, the warmest it ever is on Mars is about what it is in this room, which is uh, consistent with life, but a little on the high side. Um, but that very night, the temperature would drop some 100 or 150 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature changes, say 100 degrees centigrade, 80 to 100 degrees centigrade. The temperature changes are enormous on Mars. There is not enough oxygen. The small amount of ozone has an important consequence. Because there is very little ozone, ultraviolet light from the sun penetrates through the Martian atmosphere to the surface. That doesn't happen here. We get very little of ultraviolet light from the sun because it's all absorbed by our ozone. If the ultraviolet light penetrated through the atmosphere, we would be in bad trouble, among other things because our hereditary material, our DNA, is a, likes to absorb ultraviolet light and to fall to pieces and to make chemical bonds which are not consistent with uh, accurate reproduction of the genetic code. Now, under these conditions, it seems that Mars is not a very likely place for life. But we can do an experiment. We can make a chamber which duplicates all of these Martian conditions, the temperature, the atmospheric composition, and pressure, and the ultraviolet light. Such, a cham such chambers are, of course, called Mars jars. And we can inoculate the Mars jar with terrestrial microbes, bacteria, let's say. And when we do that, we find that lots of microbes do just fine. There are some that gasp and die for lack of oxygen. There are some that freeze to death. There are some that get fried by ultraviolet light. But there are many that enjoy those conditions extremely well. And if there are tiny quantities of liquid water available, say, between little adjacent grains, they are able to reproduce. So the Martian environment is consistent even with some kinds of terrestrial forms of life. And therefore, we should by no means exclude the possibility of uh, microscopic forms of Martian life. That doesn't guarantee their existence, of course. But what we know about the Martian environment suggests that they might be there. And particularly if there were an earlier epoch when conditions were much more balmy, then perhaps the possibility of life on Mars is even greater. Now. This was one of the interesting conclusions from the Mariner 9 mission. In many people's minds, it had raised the likelihood of life on Mars. There was, among Percival Lowell's arguments for life on Mars, one which at least wasn't based on erroneous data, and that is that there were seasonal changes on Mars. We talked about some of them in the last lecture. Here is a different kind of seasonal change which he observed, and in fact, which does exist on Mars. Here's the north polar cap, and you can see that it is surrounded by a dark color of material which, in fact, follows it on its retreat each spring and summer towards the pole of Mars. Lowell thought that what was happening was that the polar cap was melting, wetting the ground, and that the moisture encouraged plants to grow and proliferate and darken the ground. Uh, the same idea was supposed to explain the seasonal changes, which we talked about in the last lecture. But Mariner 9 found a set of changes on Mars at all scales, big and little, which seemed not to be produced by vegetation, but rather by something quite different, by windblown dust. Here we have a nice region of Mars uh, with a contrast between bright and dark markings is high. There's uh, no frost here. And we're going to look at two regions. This one over here, which I will call the leaf. It's a big leaf. It's about 10 kilometers across. And uh, this region, which is, as you see, serrated. There's another similar thing at the bottom of this crater, but we will not examine that. Now, here is a view of the leaf area, but with no leaf. And just. Thirteen days later, we took another picture of this region, and there was the leaf. In less than two weeks, this major region, um, 10 kilometers across, developed. Now, could this be the growth of vegetation? Or might it be that the dark area was obscured by overlying bright dust, which then blew